We don't actually know the order of the phones we have to argue right now, so Matt just keeps getting screwed. <laughs> Kinji shuffled the deck and has given me the worst hand. Hello and welcome to This Is iPhone is arguably the worst phone that's ever been made. And today we're going to tell you some yeah. of the best phones that clearly are superior to the iPhone and will instantly make you take your iPhone and throw it in the garbage when you see it. They should have defeated the iPhone, starting with Palm Pre. Now, Palm made a series of clever phones over the years, but the Palm They've Pre. They've made some really bad phones, too. Uh, they're mostly good. But the Palm Pre was by far the most technologically advanced phone out there besides the iPhone. Let me pitch you on why. Okay, Palm okay. Pre had wireless charging in 2009. Mind you, you had to get like a separate back and it was a little bit of a thing, but you could wirelessly charge your phone full like seven, eight years before most people could. On top of that, it had by far the best operating system that has ever been made based on Linux that's not called Android, WebOS. This TV behind us from LG still uses WebOS. So you're saying so the good. best OS that's ever existed on a phone mm -hmm. is now running a bunch of little triangles behind us? Yeah, exactly. Hit me then. What do you think is better than the Palm Pre? The Nokia N95 was a better version of the Palm Pilot. If you're looking for just features on a phone, just the features. N95 was the superior phone. This had DVD quality camera. Like for so video? 480p video. In 2007 on a camera, that was insane. And it actually sold way more units than the iPhone did. Okay, but here's the thing. It's ugly. It is. That's... <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> you can't tell me that this is better than the Palm Pre, but you know what I can tell you is even better? Droid does, baby. The Motorola Droid was, I think, the quintessential iPhone killer. Now, this was a couple years after the iPhone came out, so this is 2009. This phone had so much going for it. Not only did it actually have what was a fairly nice version of Android at the time, because it's easy to forget that early Android was bad, and the hardware of this phone was really, really impressive. Their success was also their failure. Because they decided to call it a Droid, they lost all brand marketing for it. Everyone just thought that just meant an Android phone. Yeah, that's true. So everyone's like, hey, can I get an Android? And I give you the true superior Android phone of the time, <sighs> the HTC Evo 4G. In 2010, this was only $200 on contract. This is when contracts subsidized a lot of the phones. HTC Sense was no, the no. best skin on Android. You just like the stupid flippy clock. I did like the flippy <laughs> clock. Now, what made this thing super cool, this had a micro HDMI port on it and a little kickstand. This was the ultimate media machine back in 2010. Do you know the problem with your device? What's, what's the problem? It doesn't have a keyboard. Your two phones had physical keyboards. Guess what doesn't have any physical keyboards anymore? We live in the alternate universe where all phones still have keyboards, mostly thanks to the BlackBerry Bold 9900. BlackBerry sadly doesn't have the reputation that they used to, but if you can bring yourself all the way back to 2008, I would argue that the Bold 9900 was one of the best Blackberries they ever made. It had, I think, one of the most comfortable typing experiences that were ever in the physical keyboard realm. You know what it didn't have at all? Apps. Apps. <laughs> None. Well, it was still better and, than the iPhone because it worked. So I'm noticing a pattern with all the phones you think are the best from the time. Mm -hmm. They all had keyboards and they all had mouse-like <laughs> devices on them. <laughs> but Look, you tell me to give you a list of phones that are better than the iPhone. <laughs> that list is pretty small. I got to get a little creative here, Matt. You know what was better than the BlackBerry at the time? The <laughs> <laughs> the Go ahead, Matt. What's the great execution? The again? best execution ever. I can't. <laughs> You walked yourself into I, that one. Matt, I tell can't me more. say this with a straight face. <laughs> what was better than the, the iPhone killer? The iPhone was the monom rune supply. <laughs> the ridiculous, got it. Literal piece of garbage <laughs> was announced in uh, 2015. It was Indiegogo, which raised over a quarter of a million dollars. Which is nothing for a smartphone. No. It was advertised as an anti-smartphone. No, no Android, no Play Store, no nothing. And it was this weird circle device. And it was like the back of it was like. Uh, you could get different textures. It was like rock. It was it was stone. That hole in the back of it is a camera, which was so unwieldy. It Dude, was expensive, and it, it never, never once shipped. showed. Yeah, never shipped to market. They so. spent years talking about it, and then just whoop. It's, well, that's definitely better. Than the yeah, iPhone. definitely better. I can't. I can't. I can't. Well, okay, this here, thing here. Was, this thing was trash. I'll put this back on the rails. A phone that actually was legitimately a real competitor with the iPhone was the Samsung Galaxy S4. So, Matt. The S4 to me, I would say the S3 as well. Uh, this was a good era for Samsung. The S4 had a lot going for it, namely a 1080p OLED display, something that is still honestly pretty impressive by today's standards. But keep in mind, this was in 2013. You had a removable battery, you had a micro SD card slot, and you had the greatest software experience in the world, TouchWiz. Um, bloop. bloop. No. I'll give you that the Galaxy S4 
was a damn fine phone. It was it was plastic a great fantastic. phone. It, plastic, yeah. But if it had HTC Sense, it would have been a perfect phone. Okay, well then what's better than the S4? I'll tell you what's better than the S4. God damn it! <laughs> we don't actually know the order of the phones we have to argue right now, so Matt just keeps getting screwed. <laughs> Kinji shuffled the deck and has given me the worst hand. The Amazon Fire Phone, <laughs> released in 2014, was a whopping $650 without a contract. Holy crap. What it was supposed to be able to do is like scan barcodes and products and whatnot. And your and face to give you that 3D interface. Yeah, and then you were supposed to be able to like integrate it with uh, with Amazon. Dude, this thing was trash. The specs on it were horrible. Yep. It didn't have any of the Play Store. There was nothing going for the Fire Phone. This was back in the era where everyone and their moms were trying to make themselves yeah. their own smartphone. Fire Phone was bad. You know what was great? Project Aura, a revolutionary product that I think would have changed the game had it not been so cruelly taken away from us. So Project Aura was a Google phone. Essentially, this was the idea of a fully modular smartphone. So you could theoretically have like the backbone and you could swap out a different screen if yours broke or there was a new like higher res option. You could swap out your processor. You could add extra battery modules or new camera modules. Like it was a very cool idea. And fun fact, Matt, I was one of the few people outside of Google to actually see one of these because they never shipped. But there was at one point I was at an event, a Google engineer pulled this out of their pocket for a second me and a couple of other people are like, oh, that's real. And we immediately shot video. And then the PR rapper goes like, nope. But if you want to find real footage of Project R in action, your boys got some of the only footage on the whole internet. This unfortunately got canceled and ultimately was a really doomed I, fail project. There's it, no way to make it cost effective. It, it was it, very it, limited. To be saying like, oh, I'm going to upgrade my camera module. It's just not happening. You know what is happening, Matt? The transition to your next phone that you don't know is. The what next is. phone is the number one phone selling. <laughs> <laughs> So the Red Hydrogen ah. 1 might be the worst phone that's ever been made. But Matt, it's better than the iPhone, I right? can't even argue <laughs> this in a good way. So this absolute behemoth was released by Red, the camera manufacturer who mm. also makes sunglasses. O Founder Oakley. of Oakley decided to start making cameras and then he release this piece of garbage. Yeah, so the idea was with RED cameras, you know, super high-end cinema cameras, that you'd be able to attach this either to your RED camera or you could attach like nice like lenses and cameras and stuff to the back of the phone. But at $1,300, this crashed and burned harder than Matt's last segue. What's better than the RED Hydrogen and what's better than the iPhone is in fact the Kyocera Echo. Now Matt, I'm gonna tell you about this because this was a dual screen phone all the way back in 2011, back when the iPhone was an infant. The mm. Kyocera Echo was a highly ahead of its time device. Android 2.3 was exactly the right version of Android to have a custom dual screen version with very low end specs that could definitely run lots of apps at the same time. So it had this super revolutionary feature where you could actually have four separate apps open <laughs> at the same time. And there'd be like one line of text for each of those because the resolution was so so it was bad. so ahead of its time. Sometimes the technology is just not there yet. And I agree that we have to push the boundaries. But sometimes, maybe wait a year before you do that. But you know what didn't wait a year before revolutionizing the game? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. No, so the LG Wing was actually semi-revolutionary. It in was the, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, like, I'll give you that, I'll This give you that. was like a legitimately cool, but just poor executed feature. The main screen would flip out and there was a secondary screen below it. It gave you a good viewing angle. You could like be typing while still looking at things. This was great for playing Fortnite. Yep. Because you basically had controls on the bottom of it. I'm trying really hard to say no, Matt, nice I'm things sold. about this phone. I'm sold actually. I, I'm gonna throw everyone's iPhones in the garbage. The LG Wing was clearly the best phone that we've ever seen. <laughs> the LG Wing was such a flop that LG is just like, you know, maybe we shouldn't make phones anymore. And then they didn't. But you know what's even better than the LG Wing? And something that truly blew everyone away, the Sony Ericsson Xperia Play. Oh, yeah. This was known as the PlayStation phone for a reason. Now this is around the era of the PSP Go right before the Vita came out. This actually had some really interesting ideas behind it. So it had a little slide out, but instead of a keyboard, you had an actual full like PSP style gamepad. On top of that, it had relatively decent specs and okay screen. And it actually was a relatively decent full-featured phone. Um, actually, the big problem with this one is it was announced as the PlayStation phone. Yep. And it wasn't released for like five years it later. It wasn't that long. 
and it could only play PS1 games despite the fact that it looked exactly like the PSP Go, it couldn't play a single PSP game. And then uh, the Vita came out immediately after that. And it's like, well, why, why would I get the, this phone? Cool idea, horrible execution. But you know, okay. it wasn't a horrible execution. Razer phones, which technically is one of the only ones on this list that's not officially discontinued. Well, they just didn't make any more. <laughs> <laughs> so in 2017, Razer released the Razer phone, which was pretty revolutionary as a gaming phone. It had a 120 hertz display, that was cool. which was super revolutionary at the yeah. time. Dual front facing speakers, which no phones really have now. It had a vapor chamber for cooling. This was a gaming beast. It was, and it also was a beast in your pants. Yeah, it was. It was quite large. It. It's. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't fit in your pocket. Great, but you we should stop. This is this is going off the rails very quickly. Yeah, I'll tell you what the real G's use. They use the HTC First, our last device of the day, because the HTC First had the unique distinction of being a Facebook phone, a mid-range phone that was aimed at the budget market that had a Facebook button and a Facebook launcher, which was available on other devices, but it came with it right out of the box. It originally launched at either $100 on contract yep. or $450 off contract. for the time. Within a couple months, it was so unpopular that basically like, you know what? A dollar. Uh, you could have got this at the dollar store. But the thing was, the HTC First, it was the only phone that was blessed by the Zuck. And honestly, uh, if I don't trust the Zuck with my phone and my data, who else are you gonna trust? Except for the This Is crew and subscribing to make sure that you never miss another high quality video where we're super clued in on exactly what we're talking about and not making it up as we go. Make sure to subscribe, leave a like, ring-a-ling that ding-a-ling button, and let Matt know about how great his choices of phones were. And thank Kenzie for screwing us both over.